Hi, my name is Jay Martin. This is TW Replays. Somebody had left a comment on the previous unit control video that it was over 10 years old. And I thought, wow, we can probably do a slightly better job and maybe more informative. So let's do that. So this is a video you might want to watch if you're newer to the game and you're interested in controlling your army a little bit better. The first thing I'd point out is that the order you buy the units is somewhat relevant. Um, in uh, more modern games, you can swap your unit cards around. In this game, you can't. So if you have an idea on how you want to deploy your army to the field, buying them in the specific order can be very helpful. Another thing you need to know is that, you know, if I select all my cav units here, you would think, you know, the game helpfully puts three and three on each side, that if I selected the leftmost three, that would be these. However, you can see that it clearly isn't. Same thing there. Probably the same thing there with these. So this isn't, there's really not a whole lot you can do for this. You know, you can do something like that, and now we're moving them in a more relevant position. So, I mean, that's still backwards, right? So, anytime you're selecting a, a fairly large number of units, it can be difficult to make where the cards are on your little UI here compared to how they show up in the game. I would expect that to be this unit, instead it's this one. So the only real way around this is to un move units um, in smaller groups. Um, again, I would expect this to be this one. It's that one, I can live with that, but there's really no great way um, to solve this problem. So the second subject is how do you select a unit? The first method is you can just click on one directly. Um, in the heat of battle, when you're moving very fast, that's maybe not quite as accurate. It's a little more accurate to drag select, is how you want to do it. And then you can also use the unit cards to select an individual unit. And that's why purchasing them in the specific order is useful, because you're more likely to know where the unit is in the field. Although, again, this kind of bug doesn't help with that. Another thing you can do is you can, first of all, hold down the shift key and if I start with Grenzer here hold down the shift key it'll select all the unit cards within that range so up to there up to there up to there like that so hold down shift can be useful if you've purchased your units in an order that you're happy with the other thing you can do is hold down control and that'll let you select specific units that aren't next to each other and that can be very useful also. When it comes to giving your units a move order, there are two ways you can do it. The first is you can just click, and the game hasn't started yet. I guess we can do that. And the unit will move, right? The unit's going to move there. I click, the unit's going to move here. Maybe a better way to do it is you can drag them. And then that'll have them arrive kind of in a specific formation that you have in mind. If I wanted them to be really narrow, they move like that. I can drag them out very wide like that. Dragging's kind of a good habit to get into. Another thing you can do, or the next subject, is groups. Let's get those guys moving back there to show you how a group works. And we'll just ask these guys to move here. Groups are very useful at the beginning of the game, not so much as the game progresses. The reason for that, and I'm going to drag select some units, hold down the control key, whoops, hold down the control key, and press a number, one. So now these guys are a group, and they will, the nice thing is they will move all four units with one mouse command. The downside is they're going to keep that formation, right? So this is very handy for using, or excuse me, moving units down the field at the beginning of the game. But as the game progresses, you probably want to turn the group off. A thing that a lot of players do to make your life easy is at the beginning of the game, you just make everyone a group, and then you can move your whole army down the field. 
But notice how awkward that is because it maintains the same formation. And so what you can do is make, you know, do something like that and then quickly just turn the group off. Um, one thing to keep in mind if you're moving as a big group like that is the cab units generally move faster than the infantry. And I have seen a handful of games where somebody's general runs out ahead in front and uh, the general dies, the player loses. It's kind of sad. So that is something you want to uh, watch out for. Um, some things I recommend you avoid. Um, these formation buttons, once you have a group established, I've never used them. I, I don't know why you would. Um, the uh, move forward and move back buttons are actually kind of useful. Let me see if I can give you an example. So this unit is here. And then a lot of times if you're trying to get the range, you know, kind of just right, just being able to nudge the unit forward a little bit or nudge it back a little bit can come in handy. Um, I don't recommend using any of these um, special behaviors like fire in advance or diamond formation. These seem nifty, I guess, but don't really serve a much of a purpose the alter uh kind of maybe kind of the exception of that is the light of true behavior um, which is very useful and that's kind of how you move your units around you got you know three guys go here go here go here you can uh depending on if you drag them left to right they will point that direction if you drag them right to left they will point this direction and that can be handy and there you go I, I hope that's a much better watchable experience for how to control your units and maybe 10 years from now we'll do this again